So this morning, our, our first present, uh, presenter that we're going to have come take the stage is a gentleman uh, named Mike Meyer um, from Band of Angels. He's going to come and talk about a partnership he's formed between Meyer Music and Fox 4 TV. Mike, let's give Mike a warm welcome. I'm not Mike, sorry. I'm much shorter than Mike. I'm Mark Offer from Fox 4 Morning News. Good to see you. I'm off this week, so I actually got to sleep in a little today. So. Uh, it's really an honor to be here for a million cups this morning and talk with you about a very important program, important to Fox 4. It's called Band of Angels. It's a great program, started in the last couple of years, and Fox 4 really kind of acts as a mouthpiece to help get the word out about the program. We're very involved with this. Then Meyer Music does a great job of helping to connect what we collect to the students who really need it. You're going to hear more about that. It's truly turned out to be a really great partnership between Fox 4 and Meyer Music. And I'm going to let Mike Meyer tell you more about how the entire program works and the students who we have helped and continue to want to help with your help. Here's Mike. Good morning. Is this on? Everybody can hear me? This is a little weird for me because I was one of the guys that had my hand up for the two-year thing. I'm usually sitting right over here, so a little different to be on this side of the table. So anybody in the room ever play a music instrument? Raise your hands. Anybody in the room that didn't just raise your hand ever want to play a music instrument? Anybody just like music and can't imagine a world without it? That's, that's me. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, me and kind of where we came from. Uh, this is my family. Uh, we're in the family music business. We've been in music business for 48 years. That's my sister Mitzi on the, on the right side, my brother Tom, my mom uh, Betty, and my dad Ted, and myself. And that's me at my first piano recital when I was about six. Um, we've been in the family music business for 48 years now. And every year, we see something that is difficult for us to deal with. And it's kids that want to be in music instrumental, uh, music at school, that cannot do it because of some type of financial need or other problem. And to, up until a couple years ago, we really couldn't do anything about it. But now, we can. So. What happens when two great relationships collide? Uh, Carrie Hibbler, who's the community relations person for Fox 4, and I have been friends for quite a while, and she called me one day and said, I'd like to talk about starting a, a program that dealt with the arts, and I wondered if you might help us talk through some ideas. So I went down, and we kind of sat down and talked, and, and we came up with this. What if we were to get on the air? What if we were to solicit all these people that maybe my family and every other music company in town has been renting and selling instruments to for the last 40 years? that might not be using them anymore and get them to bring them out and breathe new life into them. So what we do is we have people bring them into the stores. We have all the facilities to fix them and get them ready to go. We work with over 60 school districts and we have educational representatives that call in those schools every week and they go in and work with the teachers to help identify students who want to be in programs but can't. Next. So, that's basically what happens. Here's our flow chart if we could make one of what we hope happens. Mark Alford gets on the air or, or any of the other Fox people and promotes the program and asks people to bring in an instrument that's sitting in the closet not being used. We connect it with a student in need. What's different about us than a lot of places is we don't take a big group and just drop them in a place. These are kids that have actually applied. They work with their parents, they work with a school music teacher so that we kind of pre-screen and help connect that instrument to this kid. If that works, we're going to create more education and we're going to create a whole other generation of future music lovers who hopefully someday will take that instrument out again and bring it back and then we restart the cycle all over again. We also added a scholarship program a couple of years later to take these same kids that have the instruments from us and give them the opportunity to go to summer music camp. Music camps, a lot, like a lot of camps at colleges, and universities, the prices of these things are going through the roof, the facilities costs are going up, and it's very hard for them to stay viable and keep going. So we felt like that we had another chance to win. If we could connect kids, we're putting more kids in the camp, which is helping to make the camp more viable, which helps to employ more music teachers through the summer and keep everybody working. And then we're also sending a more educated group of kids back to the school in the fall than left when they left in May. That's kind of how the cycle works. How do we get the word out? Mark, the master saxophone player, goes out to a school at the beginning of the school year. We get on air and make an appeal. The next day, their reporters will come to our stores. We have three stores in Kansas City, so geographically it works really well to have them go to any place since they broadcast across a large area. And we collect the instruments. 
and then we go through them and start the process of cleaning, fixing, and getting them ready. About 80% of what we get doesn't work when we get it, so that's why it's so important to have the back-end facilities to make this all happen. Um, the other kind of fun things that we've done with them are um, with instruments in the, in the program. Like every charity trying to start up, you know, you got to have money to be able to help send the kids to camp. The average cost now to send a kid to camp is about 600 bucks for the week. That's a huge cost that most parents of these types of kids cannot afford. So we did two things. One was kind of fun. Uh, at the roastery, we had a concert and a coffee factory. That's something you don't see every day. And then we took all, a lot of the instruments, I mentioned 80% of it doesn't work when we get it, and there's probably about 20% of it that's absolutely unusable to play. We couldn't put it in the hands of a kid and have them be successful. So we decided we'd take those and create those into art. So we partnered with Victorian Trading Company and Hangups in KC, who if any of you guys saw their presentation here, they take old repurposed items and make jewelry out of them. And so we had an art auction called Art That Blows, which we thought was kind of fun. I was a little nervous about that when I first came up with it, but it turned out okay. So next. And so where are we now? Um, when we started the program, we thought if we collected 50 instruments, I remember Carrie specifically saying to me, how many instruments do you think we could get in the first year and this would be successful? I said, I think if we did 50, we'd be very successful and it would be great. We could help a lot of kids. In the first year, we collected over 275 instruments. To date, we've collected over 1,300 instruments. This is in the last four years, over 1,300 instruments, and we've given out 800 instruments to kids in schools. That's the size of a pretty good size small school district outside of Kansas City. The other thing that's nice about the program is because Fox 4 broadcasts across a huge area, we're not just targeting one place. Our goal is to connect one kid with one instrument across a large area. So of those, those 800 instruments, they've gone to over 60, 60 school districts um, in a 100 mile radius around Kansas City. There are kids in every place, everywhere, that need something and, and want to be in music. And so we've really been happy that we've been able to expand out and do that. So next, I've been coming here for long enough to know the final question always, what can we do to help you? And maybe we'll ask that again at the end too. Sorry, I didn't want to steal the thunder, but we have recently gotten our 501c3. Uh, we went through the first two and a half years without it, and that's a real challenge. Um, and we finally got it. And so grants, uh, grant advice, anybody who knows of grants, it's a great opportunity to help us there. Connections with kids and needs. Uh, there may be people sitting in this room who know a student who has been playing in a program, and they've been playing on a school instrument, and they don't have their own. Connect those kids with us. These instruments are meant to be given to the kid, and that's that kid's instrument until they stop playing music, and then we ask them to return it if they're going to quit. But other than that, it's theirs to keep. And a lot of the kids that we serve, they don't have a lot of things that are theirs to keep. The other thing you're going to learn about me is I'm a crier. So if you guys ask questions about emotional stuff with kids, I may start crying. <laughs> but I learned long ago that if I, if I acknowledge that, I usually don't cry. So. Uh, that's good. And then instruments. If you have an instrument sitting in your closet that's not doing anything, bring it in. We will breathe new life into it, connect it to a student. And then the last thing is just if there are any artists in the room or, or you know of any contributing artists who might want to take some of this unusable instrument and make it into something that we could uh, give it a new life and, and, and hopefully create some more opportunities for more kids to go to camp using it. So that's Band of Angels, uh, and I will take questions. Thank, thank you, Mike. <laughs> what we'd like to do is go ahead and start uh, the Q&A. Courtney, myself, and Lance will be moving through the audience with mics. I see some hands up uh, right now. Mike, if I could start uh, with the first question. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the process that you use to maybe follow up with the kids uh, once they've come through the camps and you've connected them with an instrument? Absolutely. Um, that is the biggest challenge of the whole thing. And one thing I didn't mention in one of my slides is the first year we did the scholarship opportunity, we sent two kids to camp as a trial. And you're going to see one of those kids here in just a minute. Um, the second year, we sent 10 kids to camp. This year, we sent 18 kids to University of Kansas for a week on full scholarship. So big success. I will tell you that the kids that we're serving, in a lot of cases, 
it's, it's a very difficult thing to keep track of them. And that's probably been the biggest challenge that we've faced since we started this, is keeping track of the kids and monitoring their progress and making the opportunities available to them. Um, we, I have one particular person that I think uh, of that comes to the top of my head. They've moved eight times in the last three years. Um, now, the good news is we have kind of zeroed in that the email address and the cell phone doesn't really change. So we've started a more aggressive uh, campaign to email the kids and let them know, and also to text them. But to be honest with you, a lot of what we do still happens by the US Postal Service and the mail. And, and what we find is that once we, the kids that go to camp, they, we usually can get a really good um, address for them, and a lot of times they're being cared for by a relative or maybe someone else who can help connect them and keep getting the information to them. But that's a real challenge. We want to we want to make the opportunity for those kids to go to camp every single summer until they get, graduate high school, and surround them with other kids that love music. So, question on your left. Yes. I was wondering how young you go. Uh, we have three low-income housing uh, developments that we work with in KCK, and we have a, a computer center. We have. Lots of kids come in, they come right across the street to play on the computers. Um, so I'm wondering how, how um, young you work with. And then also, um, somebody else tweeted it, but the, the same library resources uh, for entrepreneurs, you can go and get the only subscription in the area for grant uh, resources. So you can go to the library, same H&R &R Block um, Business Center and look those up. So it's a great resource. Outstanding. I'll go back and look at the Twitter feed when I'm, when I'm done. Um, the answer to your question on the kid's age, we really don't have an age requirement other than we have kind of designated this up to beginning college. Um, we want to kind of do the 19 years and maybe younger. Um, we had a situation where there was a gentleman from uh, a low-income apartment complex. He was a military veteran who was trying to get back on his own feet, but one of the things he loved was drumming. And so he started a drum line for kids within the apartment complex, and we supplied him all the drums and all the sticks and everything that they would need to get going. So we don't really have an age limit. I also had an Eagle Scout who did a program with a, with a church uh, over in KCK as an after-school program to teach kids music lessons. So, you know, if there's a kid that wants to put the instrument to their mouth and make some noise and do it, we'll try and help. Got a question here in the middle? Thanks. Hi, are you familiar with the CASA organization's court appointed special advocates and have you made a connection with them as a CASA volunteer? I know we're always looking for resources for our kids who are abused and neglected children under state jurisdiction. Um, if you haven't made those connections, I can help you with CASA of Jackson, uh, Jackson County and I'm sure there are others who would be interested in Wyandotte County and Johnson County as well. Absolutely. Um, Terry Kinchelow, who, who was in charge of the CASA breakfast last year, and I are very good friends. And so I've talked to Terry about it. Um, I think that any time, if you know of any of the CASA volunteers that have a foster child or a court-advocated child that they're, they're representing and you want to connect them with us, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's those, the CASA volunteers are the stable connection in this kid's crazy life that we're trying to help make that connection with. So absolutely, I'd, I'd love to talk more to CASA. Got a question here in the front. Love the idea, love the passion. Um, do you have any connections to these camps? How do you choose them? Uh, do you know anyone maybe that could help at that KU camp give you a discount or something? We, yeah, we actually did get a discount from the KU camp. The, the cost, uh, to an, a student, I sent my daughter to camp there this year, and it was 665 bucks for the week. Um, they discounted the rate down to $500 for us. One of the things that's important to me, though, is that I don't discount it down to them to the point that they're in the red. I want these people to be making money, because if that camp doesn't make money, that camp's not going to be viable long term. So I think it's important that in any relationship that you enter into, and in anything that you try and do, it's a win-win for both sides. I can't just go in and ask for a cheap discount for something that's going to be a win for me and they lose money or else it's only going to last for a short time. 
So um, they've done a great job. I mean, they give it to us at a reasonable cost, but reality is I want the music teachers to benefit and, and the camps to keep going. Central Missouri State University, which is now UCM, they just canceled their camp this year after 60 years. I mean, it's just heartbreaking. So, Question here in the front. Uh, have you looked into the jazz and blues com uh, community in this town? Because many of the people that you're trying to reach are in the same neighborhoods where many of these jazz and blues performers live and they know about the instruments. And uh, the other part would be Bobby Watson's group over at UMKC. Phenomenal connections. Yeah, have already spoken with Bobby Watson. Um, and yes, I've tried to make connections into those, although we can always use more. Um, there's a gentleman who's on our board. His name is Mark Pender. I don't know if any of you guys are Conan O'Brien fans. Mark is the band leader on the Conan O'Brien show and he's on our board. He's from Grandview. He's actually coming back this year to play our Heartstrings Gala at the Roastery on Valentine's Day. And uh, his nickname is The Love Man, so it's going to be called Love Songs with the Love Man. But um, yeah, absolutely. You know, the neat part of this whole program is when Carrie approached me four years ago about it, you know, we didn't really know what was going to happen with it. We thought, let's, let's give it a run and see what happens. We're really early on in the process. Most of the kids that start in music, instrumental music in school start in fifth grade, um, fifth grade and sixth grade. And so now four years in, we're having our first group of kids rolling into ninth grade, and, and we've helped some high schoolers along the way. But, um, you know, we're just getting started on that. But yes, absolutely, I would love to talk to any musicians. And I hope by being in front of this room and all the people that are going to see this on the live stream, those people will contact me and say, you know, hey, I'd love to help. We'd love to start a private lesson program for some of these kids. Um, I would like to address, though, that the, a lot of the kids that are in need are in these neighborhoods. Th these kids are in need in every neighborhood. Uh, we've given instruments to Pittsburgh, Kansas, Garnett, Kansas, you know, Concordia, Missouri, Marshall, Missouri. So it isn't just an inner city thing, for sure. It's not just a Kansas City quick right around the metro thing. This is really a, 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 a nationwide thing. You know, I mean, you, can, you could take kids anywhere, take kids anywhere. Got a question here in the middle. Mike, um, my daughter goes to Kansas City Art Institute. She's going into her third year. She's excellent in doing art. And does she need an art project? Because mm -hmm. I have one. So <laughs> I, I can get you in contact with her, and I think she can do all that art for you. That would be awesome. I would love that. I would love that. I'll give you my card after. Another question here. Hey. Hey, Mike. How have you done? Good. Good. <laughs> uh, could you go over again how you bring the instruments in and process them? Who is it that's doing the refurbishing and, and kind of that process? It's, it's Meyer Music that's doing that. Um, and it was kind of funny. One of the other things when Carrie and I first sat down to do this, I said, okay, Carrie, I'm in. We'll, you know, she's the one actually that came up with the name Bandit. And that's Carrie standing over in the, in the corner by the doors. Um, she came, she said, I love the idea, let's do it. And I said, okay, I'll do it, but I'm not gonna do it until you come out and see, tour our stores, and see what it's gonna take to make this happen. Because if Fox tried to do this just by themselves, they would have hundreds of people drop off a bunch of stuff on their front lawn that couldn't be used. And I'll give you a great example of, of where this happened, Joplin, Missouri, which we, uh, gave instruments to after the big tornado that wiped out the high school down there. People flooded them with used instruments to rebuild that music program. Problem was, they flooded them with a bunch of music instruments that don't work, and the school didn't have any money to fix them. So it was a great gesture, but it really wasn't thought through. And so what we did was we actually took a lot of those instruments that they got donated that didn't work, and we replaced them with ones that we had already fixed that did. So the process is pretty intensive. I mean, um, we have a network of probably 15 uh, uh, woodwind and brass repair technicians and orchestral repair technicians that, that work on these instruments. Many of them are doing this for free at no charge. Some of them are doing this for, at a very reduced rate, and, and Meyer Music is just uh, flitting the bill for that. So, you know, I showed you my family earlier. This may be the point where I cry, but uh, I showed you my family earlier, and you know we've always been taught that it was very important to give back. So we feel it our responsibility 
as, as a corporate entity or a community business to do that. And so, and I know that Fox shares that. They are one of the most giving organizations that you'll find. Um, but it's, it's also done something really neat for our staff. Um, Barb and Jennifer and, and all the people that are cleaning these, you know, a kid will show up at the store, they will just circle around this kid and make it happen. And the kid walks out with an instrument because it's really a difficult thing. When, you, when, you, when a, a teacher goes into a school and they get everybody hyped up about being in the program and then a student shows up at the store to get the instrument, not really thinking about the finance of it, I would be making a bad business decision and a, and a mistake on multiple levels by giving them something that we'd have to go back, get back later. So you have a parent who's embarrassed, you have a kid who's destroyed, and you have a band or an orchestra teacher at the school that's disappointed because a kid can't be in the program. What used to be a real negative is totally turned into a positive. Now we can help those kids. I wish we could help every single kid, but those kids in particular, there was one little boy that showed up, had been to a school instrument night. Um, dad had passed away previous year. Um, mom thrown into financial turmoil, wanted to do everything she could do for the kid, and they showed up and we gave him an instrument. Another one, mom walked almost two miles to, um, excuse me, turn in the application for the summer music camp. You know, so it's, it's just an awesome, awesome thing. Mike, we also have a question. Did you have another comment? No, no go ahead. Sorry. We, we've got a question from our live uh, Twitter feed. Oh, and good. That is, have you considered engaging the Missouri Children's uh, Division? I had not, but perhaps I should. That would be a good one. Yeah, All right. absolutely. So, how are we? We've got a now? question here in the middle for you also. I think on that note, also engaging your local community mental health centers is a really good idea because op often they have funding available to send kids to camps and buy instrument. We call that wraparound funds at Truman Medical Center Behavioral Health. So if we have a kid enrolled in our program from the age of zero to 25 and they want to go to a summer cap or they want to go to an, you know, buy an instrument, we can use the funds through our local programming to fund the placements and fund instruments and so that might be another good idea to you know and that's you know Wyandotte, Johnson County Mental Health, Truman, Swope, <clears throat> Rediscover, Comprehensive. So I mean that could give you another really good option. Wonderful. If you could give me your contact information or I can give you my card and just reach out to me at your convenience I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Mike, uh, normally we would wrap up with asking you one final question but I think you've already done that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us there, about there what you is. need? There is, I'm really glad. So kind of when I was talking to Melissa about starting our presentation, I kind of came up with what happens when two great relationships collide. So I want to share with you a little video. This girl is a girl who's one of our recipients, one of our scholarship recipients, and an instrument recipient. And I had no idea how talented this girl was, but you will see her playing professionally somewhere here in Kansas City at some point. Her name's Jada. The guy on the other side is Tony Desaire. Tony Desaire is a nationally known uh, Yamaha piano artist. He actually played on Valentine's Day at the Kaufman Center here and um, donated his time to come and do a little private concert uh, for us. We did it at my home. This is at my house uh, two years ago for our first opportunity to kind of do a gala. Jada played two songs before Tony did and then Tony played and he mingled and about 10 o'clock he was getting ready to leave and we're walking up through my kitchen for him to leave and Jada is still there. Jada runs up to him and says, I love the way you played. That was so incredible. Do you know the song, Take the A-Train? And he said, yeah, I, I know the song, Take the A-Train. And he goes, do you know the song, Take the A-Train? And she said, well, kinda. And he goes, well, come in here and let's play it together. They went in and sat down and what happened next was absolutely amazing. You're gonna see 30 seconds of it. The full video is from my cell phone. It's on YouTube. It's about two and a half minutes long. And what's neat about the two and a half minutes is these two people had never played together. They had never practiced, not rehearsed. They didn't know each other. And all of a sudden, this magical thing happened. And as you watch Jada play, the warmer she gets and the more comfortable she gets, they learn how to dance together in this video. It's just amazing. So I'll end with that. And thank you very much for, for having us come and present. Jonathan, if you'd like to play that.
He's 15, by the way, at the, in that video. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.